Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation on multiverse-wise cooperation via correlated decision making. I originally delivered this presentation to some researchers at the Future of Humanity Institute and I have a paper on this topic that we will publish on FRI's website soon. Consider the classic one-shot prisoner's dilemma. As you may know, causal decision theory always recommends to defect in the one-shot prisoner's dilemma. But if you buy into some of the alternatives to causal decision theory, say evidential decision theory or the logical decision theories developed at the Machine Intelligent Research Institute, then you would sometimes want to cooperate. Specifically, if you think that the other prisoner uses a decision algorithm that is very similar to yours, then you might want to cooperate to make it more likely that the other prisoner cooperates as well. This works with many or maybe even most of the alternatives to causal decision theory that have been proposed. And to refer to this cooperation based on correlated decision algorithms in a way that doesn't pre presuppose any specific alternative to causal decision theory, I will use Hofstadter's term super rationality. I think that super rationality rarely has implications for interactions with others on Earth. For one, the correlations with other humans might be low, or the degree of similarity between our decision algorithm and that of other humans might be low. This is especially the case if you've thought a lot about decision theory and super rationality. Um, if you have, then maybe your decision algorithm will be different from those of people who haven't thought about it at all. And also, most interactions on Earth, especially those with, uh, with high stakes, will be iterated, so you will be able to interact with some person more than once. And uh, this allows you to reward cooperation and to punish defection. And uh, this in turn enables cooperation without relying on any, um, on any kind of super rationality. Also, if you if you've already observed the other agent's behavior in the past and you've seen that the other, the other agent or the other human tends to cooperate or defect, then you have little reason to make it more likely that they cooperate by cooperating yourself. And there are a few other reasons, and I go into more detail on those in the paper. So if you want to find, if you, if you want to find implications for this idea of super rationality, I think we have to look beyond our daily interactions with other humans on Earth. And I think that if we do look beyond Earth, there are indeed such corporations and problems. Specifically, I think that super rationality makes a big difference in the prisoner's dilemma type cooperation problem between all consequentialists in the multiverse. So consider two agents in different parts of the multiverse. One maximizes some utility function u, and one maximizes some utility function v. Um, so we will assume that their preferences can be represented as utility functions, even though um, that might, may not be entirely realistic. Now these two can choose between different, um, between different strategies, and uh, because they are consequentialists, even though they cannot observe each other's choices, their choices affect the utility of the other agent. So, for example, if the U maximizer decides to not only maximize U, but also um, maximize V a little bit, for example, if cheap opportunities to do so arise, then this will increase the utility of the V maximizer. And so basically, both of them have the choice between the cooperative option, in which they maximize both utility functions to some extent, and um, a non-cooperative choice in which they only maximize their own utility function. And if both cooperate, then they, they, then they might benefit from this kind of trade. Whereas super rationality doesn't seem to make a big difference on Earth, I think it does make quite a big difference if we consider a very large universe or multiverse. Because the multiverse, or potentially also just an infinite universe, is so large, uh, it, it is basically guaranteed to contain many agents, and many of these agents will have exactly the same decision procedure that we have. And um, 
if we assume some kind of orthogonality of values and decision theory, then uh, many of them will have different utility functions. And this means that in terms of expected utility, the non-causal implications of our choice, what it tells us about these other parts of the multiverse, are much more significant than the, than the mere causal implications of our choice, because there are so many other agents that we influence a-causally and only one, one part of the multiverse that we can influence causally. As far as I know, nobody has written extensively about the implications of super-rationality in a large universe or multiverse, but this basic idea isn't entirely novel either. Specifically, some people have proposed example applications uh, of the idea. So there's a paper by Paul Almond in which he proposes various uh, ideas following the pattern that if we as a civilization behave more nicely towards other civilizations, then this makes it more likely that they will also behave more nicely towards us. So for example, if we don't want to be in a simulation or have many copies of our civilization uh, in simulations, then we might want to refrain from simulating other civilizations that don't want to be in a simulation to make it less likely that they simulate us. There's also a paper by Nick Bostrom in which he proposes to make our AI trade with other AIs via a causal means. And one point that he makes is that if we make our AI trade, so if we enable our AI to trade a causally with other AIs, or if we diversify the utility function of our AI, this makes it more likely that other civilizations will do the same with their, their AIs. There's also some discussion under the term a causal trade. A causal trade is also a kind of cooperation based on alternatives to causal decision theory, and it's, it is even usually discussed as something that could happen between agents in different parts of the multiverse. But the mechanism of a causal trade, as it is usually discussed, differs from that of super rationality. So in super rationality, uh, it's relatively simple. We have two agents; they are similar to each other, or they are correlated. So one reason is that if he cooperates, it's more likely that the other one cooperates as well. A causal trade is a bit more complicated. In a causal trade, the agents themselves don't have to be similar at all. Um, it's enough that they have simulations or models of each other. And under these circumstances, cooperation or some form of trade or coordination can sometimes be ensured. A causal trade may be more powerful than super rationality. And we could also view it as more general. So maybe super rationality is the special case of a causal trait in which I am the model of the other agent. But at least if there's a distinct model or simulation, a causal trait seems to be much more difficult to implement. And consequently, a causal trait hasn't been discussed as something that humans could or should do right now. I've argued that when acting in our part of the multiverse, we should take the preferences of other agents with our decision algorithm into account to make it more likely that they will do the same for us. So this means that we, when acting in, in our part of the multiverse, need some new criterion for choosing between different policies. Now, how should this new criterion look like? And maybe most importantly, how much should we take the preferences of the other agents into account? Theoretically, this new criterion could have all kinds of complex shapes, but Hazani's aggregation theorem suggests that under relatively weak assumptions, the new criterion is the weighted sum of the utility functions of the other agents. So again, we assume that their preferences can be represented by utility function. And we will call this new criterion the, our compromise utility function. With this term, the question of how to take the other's preferences into account becomes much more net manageable. We only have to worry about which weights to assign. I'm not going to propose a full solution to the pro problem of assigning these weights properly, but I'm going to make a more meta-level argument that everyone should aim to assign the same unbiased weights. And if this, if this argument goes through, then it would mean that super-rationality, when applied in a large, large uh, universe, or multiverse at least, has very strong implications, because it basically means that all the agents with, some, with the same decision algorithm should adopt 
the same new utility function. The argument in favor of this is basically just an extension of the argument in favor of any kind of cooperation. So if we don't cooperate, then everyone else won't cooperate as well. So everyone only assigns weight to their own utility function. If we do cooperate, that is if we do assign some weight to the other's utility function, then everyone else will do the same. If everyone indeed cooperates, this doesn't increase the overall weight that is assigned to our utility function. But it's nonetheless better because we get more of the lower bits of weight and these are more valuable than the higher bits of weight that we sacrifice. Um, one way of looking at this is that by giving up the higher bits of weight, we sacrifice the opportunity to maximize our own utility functions in cases where we have a strong comparative disadvantage to do so. And by getting the other agents to assign some weight to our utility function, we make sure that when the others have a strong comparative advantage to maximize our utility function, they will choose to do so. Uh, another, another way of looking at this would be that, um, that there are diminishing returns on weight. So by, <coughs> by having the other agents assign some, very uh, some small weight to our utility function, we ensure that the low-hanging fruit for our value system are picked in all parts of the multiverse. And by giving up higher bits of weight for our utility function, our part of the multiverse, we give up the opportunity to pick very high hanging fruit. And this trait is beneficial. Now this argument can be extended to imply that everyone should adopt the same weights or the same utility function. So if we assume biased weights, that is, if we systematically assign more weights to our utility function for no reason other than it's our utility function, then everyone else will do the same. Whereas if we take some unbiased weight, which may mean just assigning the same weight to all the utility functions, but it doesn't have to mean that, then everyone else will also do the same. And again, this doesn't give us, give, um, give us more weight that is assigned to our utility function, but we get more of the lower bits of weight and uh, sacrifice higher bits of weight and this is more valuable overall for similar considerations about diminishing returns and comparative advantages. Obviously, this is only a rough sketch of the argument and for more de details, you can see the, the full paper once it's out. If we buy this argument, then again, multiverse wide super rationality has very strong implications because it would mean that we would have to adopt a new utility function, which might be quite different from our old utility function. Even if we had a full procedure for assigning these weights properly, we still wouldn't know the exact specification of our compromise utility functions because we don't know what the other agents with our utility function, with our decision algorithm care about. The argument in favor of multiverse by super rationality or super rationality in general doesn't hinge on that at all. It only hinges on being able to benefit them. But if we don't know the other agents' values very well, we will be much worse at benefiting them. In an extreme case, we basically know nothing about all the other agents' values and only know our own, our own utility function. And in this case, object level decisions would basically be dominated by the, the impact of that decision on our own utility fund or on our own utility. This is sometimes given as an argument against multiverse wide super rationality having strong implications because we really don't know very much uh, about the values of other agents in multiverse. Still, I think that multiverse wide super rationality has strong implications. For one, I think that we're not in a situation of total ignorance about the other parts of the compromise utility function. For example, we can just observe what other super rationalists on Earth, or maybe just humans in general, care about. And this probably tells us just, about, just as much about the compromise utility function as our own values do. We can also try to reason about the processes that determine the distribution of values in the multiverse. 
and, for example, think about what kind of values are produced by biological and cultural evolution, and so on. Another reason why I believe that multiverse wide superrationality has strong implications, despite our uncertainty about the values of the other agents, is that some interventions that benefit our collaborators don't require any knowledge of their values, as long as we believe that future agents will be able to attain such knowledge. One example following this idea is that we could make sure that our AI, our super intelligent AI, uses the right decision theory and thus can engage in a causal trade and super rationality properly. And the idea is that if we believe that the gains from trades are significant, then making sure that our AI trades has strong benefits. It's also something that very few people are working on or are interested in, even less than in regular AI safety. There also seem to be some obvious things to work on. For example, there's no consensus about which decision theory a super intelligent AI should use. Researching this seems to be a clear way of making progress towards an AI that trades a causally or super rationally. Some interventions are actually discouraged by multiverse wide super rationality, and the field of moral advocacy is especially strongly affected by these discouragements. Not all forms of moral advocacy are bad. For example, spreading consequentialism is probably still good because the agents who care about our part of the multiverse will do so in a consequentialist way. Also, facilitating moral reflection, so giving people all kinds of moral ar arguments is probably also good because there are more agents who like moral reflection than there are who act actively dislike moral reflection. But some forms of moral advocacy are quite zero-sum and essentially a, a tug-of-war, a multiverse-wide multiverse -wide tug-of-war between consequentialist value systems. Um, one example is that of utilitarian trade ratios between happiness and suffering. So some want the trade ratios of, say, the general population to be lower and some want it to be higher than it currently is. Now, if either side pulls this rope more into their direction, then they would have to reason that this makes it more likely that in other parts of the multiverse, agents on the other side will also pull the rope more into their direction. So by pulling on the rope, you can increase the overall pull, but uh, you can't move the rope in, into any particular direction. So pulling the rope is essentially a waste of time or resources. I give some, um, some caveats and details on this in the paper. Speaking of the paper, as I mentioned in the beginning, I wrote a long paper on this topic uh, that we will publish on FRI's website soon. This paper contains much more detail on many of the topics that I discussed in this talk, but it also contains many additional considerations.